All right, with our last lesson, we are taking a look at how you can get instance IDs from some of the methods we're using. Sort of like uh, when we left off here is when the player hit the F key, I had found the furthest ghost with instance furthest. It sends me back its ID, and I've got that ID saved in some ghost. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little task that's really popular. Is just show you a few different things you can do with some ghost that you might not know you can do right off the bat. So number one is this. You can definitely use the with statement. So you can say stuff like with some ghost. Now you are coding some ghost. You know, you can do whatever you want here, right? You can do as much code as you want, and that particular ghost is going to run that code. Here's what I could have also done. Instead of doing that, I could have also done this. And that'll actually work as well. Basically, every object, right, that is an ID. So that ID, hey, change your speed to zero. So you can do this with variables. And so that's a nice one that you can end up doing there. Just to show you that that still works is I'll hit the F key here. And we'll see same behavior as before. So the farthest ghost does end up stopping. And if I move closer, right? Make that the farthest ghost. Still stops. So just so you know, you can still do that. So you can access the variables inside of that particular instance. Now knowing you can do that actually opens the door to being able to do a whole bunch of stuff. Because now I can do something like this. I'll leave that ghost stopped. But now I'm going to fire a arrow towards that particular ghost. Now you may say, well, how do you do that? Well, if you want to fire towards something, you have to know the direction towards that object. So this is really popular in a lot of tower games. So let's do this here. Let's find the direction towards that ghost. Now one method you've seen before is point direction. Now the nice thing is, is point direction wants one location x, y. And it wants your other location, x, y, 2, sorry, x, 2, and y, 2. Now, the nice thing is, is I do know where this other ghost is. This other ghost, well, I'm at x, y. The ghost is at some ghost dot x and some ghost dot y. Okay, this one's great. And as long as some ghost is, in fact, a ghost which it is, because I know I have two ghosts in the room, then that particular ghost definitely has an X variable and I'm allowed to access it. And same thing here, it's allowed to access it. Now you may be asking, well, what happens if you don't have a ghost, right? They've been killed. I'll come back and I'll do that one in a minute. So I have the direction towards that ghost, right? From my XY to their XY. Now all I want to do is I create an arrow. I don't know, I'll call it Bob instance create at my xy create an arrow and i'm going to tell bob to please set their speed to eight and hey bob set your direction equal to and you know it set it to that thing i just figured out before right that variable dir so set it equal to direction and i guess i should technically also set the image angle also equal to direction so that the arrow looks right. Now remember this is happening every single time I press F. Let's give it a go. Uh, the big concept being this, right? That you can access variables inside of an object if you know its ID. And here we go. Time to shoot some ghosts. And I hit F. It's going to stop the farthest and shoot towards it. One, two, three, and go. And then, like before, if I get closer to the other ghost, it'll stop that ghost. Perfect. Addictive. Okay. So that's a nice idea there. So, uh, you know, know that you can use this. We're going to use it a lot uh, 
farther down the line of this course. You'll see that in a lot of the how-to videos, right? Use this idea. Now, of course, someone always asks, well, what happens if you have no idea if there's a ghost that is furthest from you? What happens if all the ghosts have been destroyed? That is true, and we know that if there's no ghost, that this will send us back negative 4, which you can just think of as being a number less than 0. So what I can do is I can actually do a little thing here where I can do a check. You can either check before if there's even any ghosts on the screen, which is actually one nice check. So one thing I could do is I could have done this. If some ghost is less than 0, that means that there was no ghost, basically. I could just say exit, which means get out of here. Don't bother doing the rest of the code down here. So that's one possibility. The other way to do this check is you could actually do a little check before you do this. And we could just say if instance exists, o ghosts is true, then you do all this code. Or you could say if instance exists, ghost is false, get out of here. There's no ghost to shoot at, right? So it won't bother shooting. So those are two little fixes that sometimes you have to put before you start to try to fiddle with these instance variables. Make sure it actually is an ID, right? And it's not just a, uh, a value of negative 4, because then this won't work. Because that's like saying, hey, if negative 4 is x, and of course, there's no object if it's negative 4. So this little check is important. Thanks for watching. Try the little challenge, which is going to be something similar to this.